Hi there Tiffin owners. Today on your 2011 Tiffin Allegro Motorhome, we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install Roadmaster's rear anti-sway bar. And this is what our sway bar looks like when it's installed. It's an additional sway bar that is installed in tandem with your factory sway bar, which is located just on the other side of our axle here. Except this sway bar is significantly more robust than that factory sway bar. It's significantly thicker diameter and it's made of a 4140 chrome molly steel so it's going to be stronger than the one that we had there but since it's installed on this side of our axle we're going to be getting the support from our original factory one in addition to this one so whenever our motorhome wants to go to the left or to the right and that body starts to roll in order for the suspension to allow it to do that that's going to pull up on this part of our sway bar and it's going to push down on the opposite side here and that's going to cause our sway bar to flex and it doesn't want to flex, it wants to stay in this normal position here. So once it does flex, this larger, thicker bar here is going to help bring our motor home back upright again so we can return to its position. What this means for you as the driver is you're going to have more confidence in the stability of your motor home because when you go to make turns, especially quick turns such as an evasive maneuver, normally your motor home is going to tilt hard to one side. Having this here is going to minimize how much your motor home is going to tilt so you're not going to feel like you're going to roll over. It's going to give you more confidence in taking those turns and it's also going to ease the amount of energy and effort that you have when going down the road because you're not going to have to compensate as much whenever that big semi drives by and you get a big crosswind that wants to kind of push you over into the other lane. You're still going to feel it of course but it's gonna be reduced significantly having this extra support here. And this way, when you get to your destination, you'll have more energy so you can enjoy doing the things that you wanna do with your family and friends. Our sway bar, as well as all the brackets, have a black powder coat finish on them to protect against rust, and it also looks nice underneath your motorhome here. This is one of those upgrades that you can show off at the campsite, and you can tell all of them how much easier it has made your trips all across the country. If you want to maximize the amount of anti-sway in your motorhome, I'd also recommend a front anti-sway bar. It comes with all the hardware you need to get it installed, so why don't you follow along with me and we'll show you how to get it up and on your motorhome. We'll begin our installation by lifting up on our motorhome. We're going to use the leveling jacks that are equipped on it to lift it up. I've already got it lifted up and then I supported it with jack stands underneath because we don't want to trust just our leveling jacks to hold it up while we're working underneath. We needed to lift it up so we can install our hanger bracket in this location here. We're just behind the tire on our rear axle and our leaf spring here, if it was still lowered down, would actually be higher up and it'd be blocking those bolts so you wouldn't be able to get them out. We're gonna remove these using a 21 millimeter socket. You don't need to hold the nuts on the other side because they have a welded on flange that will hit on the frame that will allow it to twist off. And that was the nut just falling down, no big deal. We are gonna reuse these bolts though, so you will wanna make sure you keep that. We can now take the hanger that comes included with our kit and we're gonna hang it right here using this hardware. So we're just gonna slide these out. And we're gonna line up the holes in our brackets with the holes in the frame. Reinsert the bolts. And then these were the nuts that fell off. You can see the flange on them. We're just gonna go ahead and start this on this side. Once we get this one started, we'll insert the factory bolt in the other hole and start the nut on it as well. Just bring your nut up there and then you'll have to turn the bolt to actually thread it into the nut since the nut's got that flange on it. We can then go back and tighten these down. And then we'll torque those to the specifications found in our instructions. We're now underneath the vehicle and here's our rear axle. The U-bolt that we have here, we are gonna remove all the nuts from it as this bracket here is going to install underneath. And we're gonna show you real quick the orientation it's gonna go. So once those bolts are removed, it's gonna slide up just like this. These are gonna line up with the holes in our bracket as well as the slots. And this is gonna to be towards the center as well as facing towards the rear. Showing you that now, because once we get these nuts off, these components here are all pretty heavy and holding them all up there at the same time is a little bit of a task. So just be prepared for that. Next set of hands may, may be necessary depending on 
how confident you are in holding everything up. To remove the nuts, we're gonna use a one and eighth inch socket. And you are gonna need a pretty heavy duty impact. This is a one inch impact. If you don't have something this big and you just got your little half inch impact at home, you're likely gonna to have to take these off by hand because they're extremely tight. And now we're just gonna remove them. I like to kind of go back and forth and loosen them up evenly. What I like to do is after I get a nut removed, I'm just gonna thread it on there a turn or two. And I'll do one here and one caddy cornered, and that'll just keep this large heavy plate here from sliding off when we're taking these nuts off. So now that we've got them all loose and just the two that we threaded on there to hold that plate up, we can go ahead and get our plate over here and get it ready. And then gonna hold up on this piece, remove the nuts that we had hand tightened on there. And then we're going to carefully lift these components up, hold them in place, and then get a nut started. We do want to reuse the washers that came off as well, but sometimes it's easier to just go ahead and get a nut on it without a washer, and then you can take it back off with that washer on afterwards. So we went ahead and put the two caddy cornered nuts back on. Now we're gonna reinstall the rest of the nuts, making sure we put those washers on. And if you didn't put any washers on previously, you can go back and put those on now. You do wanna check your U-bolts where they sit on top of your leaf spring, because when you took them loose, maybe they slid over. This could have popped up over the side. Just make sure that it's inside of its little seat here, butted up against the end. It's not a bad idea. If you've just taken this side loose, maybe take a quick peek over at the other side so you can see how it's supposed to sit on top of your leaf spring so you can mimic that over on this side. Well then tighten them down. I like to go, just like we did taking them loose, tighten them down a little bit on each one so they tighten down evenly. We can then go back and torque our hardware to the specifications found in our instructions. Now that we've got both of our brackets installed, the lower and the upper, we can go ahead and repeat the same procedures over on the other side of the vehicle to get the lower and upper installed. We're now gonna take our hangers and attach them to our upper brackets. You can use either hole. We're gonna be using the lower one to give us a better position on keeping our sway bar level. So we're just gonna line that up. And then we're gonna use our 5 ace hardware to slide the bolt from the outside toward the inside. And then secure it with a nylon locking nut on the other side. We can then tighten it down with a 15 16 socket and wrench. Now that we've got this one snug down, just want to check to make sure it can still pivot. And then we're going to install the other one on the other side in the same way. Now we can prepare our sway bar. You'll get new bushings that come included with it and they are going to be split. We're going to take the lubricant that comes with it and we're gonna coat the inside of our bushing. Now some people do, some people have reported that this causes irritation on their skin, so you may wanna wear gloves. I haven't noticed any issues with mine, but it's just dependent upon the individual. So if you've got sensitive skin, you may wanna consider gloves. We're just gonna fully coat the inside here. And what I like to do with the excess that I've got just on my finger there, I'm gonna put that on the outside. You don't need to put any on the outside, but it can help minimize any noises, squeaks, and rattles that could potentially occur with a sway bar. Now that we've got it all lubed up, we're just gonna open up the split, slide it right over the end, and then put one of our brackets on top. We'll prepare the one on the other side in the same way. We're now back underneath and we want our sway bar to be in this position here. We want the dip to be here in the center to go around the differential. 
So we're gonna start by bringing her back here. Now we're just line up our bushing with our hanger and slide our bolt through. Want to make sure we're going from the outside in and we'll secure it with a nut on the other side. We're using our 5 8 hardware for these. We'll then hang the other side the same way. We're now just going to tip our sway bar up and see which holes line up best when it's level. We're going to have to use the set of holes that's furthest towards the rear because our sway bar is extremely close to the shock here. So that's going to force us to have to use these holes. So now that we know which holes we're going to be using, we can take our hardware. This is the smaller 7 16 hardware. Put flat washers on them and then drop them down the holes. It's going to line up with our sway bar. So we're going to use that furthest rear. We're going to skip a hole and then drop it in again. We'll then lift up on our sway bar, lining up the holes in our bushings with the bolts we just dropped down. We'll then follow that up with a washer and a nut. We can then go back and tighten down our hardware. We're going to use a 16 millimeter socket for the bolt and an 18 millimeter wrench for the nut. And we can torque our hardware to the specifications found in our instructions. We can then tighten down our end links. Now that we've got everything tightened and torqued down, we're ready to take our motorhome out on the road and enjoy the new anti-sway. And that completes our installation of Roadmaster's rear anti-sway bar on our 2011 Tiffin Allegro motorhome.